I'm not saying that everything is always going to be clear when God is leading you to date someone. Confusion is definitely not an automatic sign that God is saying no about this person. As I've explained in other videos, while God doesn't cause confusion in your life, he will allow confusion, including in relationships, for some very good reasons. So you can watch those videos by clicking the card in the right corner of your screen. With that said, there will also be some very clear signs that God is saying, yes, I do want you to date that person. And we're gonna talk about five of those signs in this video today. Now, in a lot of my videos, you can just take the signs individually and one or two might be able to help you and the other ones might not be relevant for you. But this is one of those videos where I would encourage you to make sure you watch all of them because to really know if God's telling you to date someone, you should see most of these signs and not just one or two. Number one, God probably wants you to date this person if you're equally yoked and you are romantically attracted to this person. Now, just because you're equally yoked with someone does not mean that you for sure should date them and God's saying yes. Another big variable that would need to combine with this fact of being equally yoked is your own romantic interest in this person. When God really wants you to be with someone, that's gonna be confirmed with the desires that he gives you for this person. However, if you're not equally yoked, it really doesn't matter how romantically interested you are in this person. You don't wanna play mental gymnastics. You wanna just be very simple with the scriptures and read them at face value because it certainly does say not to be unequally yoked. Don't pay attention to all the other relationships where you see, well, they dated an unbeliever and then that person became a Christian, so therefore it might be God's will for me to do that as well. Just read the scriptures and obey them. You have to keep it simple because anytime we disobey the word of God, including when it tells us to not be unequally yoked, there's always a negative consequence. God can save your future spouse without you disobeying the word of God. For all those people who were in an unequally yoked relationship and then that person became a Christian, God could have saved that person without that other person disobeying his word. And there will always be negative consequences for those people and anyone else who disobeys the word of God. Number two, God clearly wants you to date that person if they also want to date you. So again, these points really should be taken together. Point one, you're equally yoked, you like them. Now you need to look at the other side of the equation and make sure that they like you as well. So another way to frame all this is that rather than asking, does God want me to date this person? Sometimes it's actually more helpful to ask, why wouldn't God want me to date this person? Why would God deny two Christians who want to honor him in romance? God made romance. It pleases him when his children want to be married and thus take steps to pursue that gift. So if there's no glaring issue that would say, this is a bad idea, don't date that person, it's a very good sign that God is probably telling you to date that person. Number three, God clearly wants you to date that person. If you are prepared to honor him and your heart's ready to be in a biblical relationship. As I just said, rather than looking for this clear yes, sometimes it's just as powerful to think to yourself, is there any reason not to? Is there any big glaring red light? Because an absent, absence of red lights is in itself oftentimes a green light. One red light you should look for is the condition of your own heart. Are you just getting out of an unhealthy relationship and you need time to heal so you don't make the same mistakes again? Are you idolizing this person and are you going to a relationship for bad reasons? Do you have some sort of hidden sin that would prevent you from engaging in a godly relationship? Song of Solomon 8 verse 4, do not arouse or awaken love until it so desires. This means there is a time when love is ready to be awakened in a biblical way. Number four, God clearly wants you to date this person if you really like this person and you want to date, but you're asking, is this person the one? Many times Christians struggle and get stalled when it comes to a particular person because they're asking God about marriage, but they're skipping all the dating questions. So rather than asking, Lord, is this the person you want me to date right now? They're asking, Lord, is this the person you're gonna call me to marry one day? God usually 
doesn't tell you who is the one through a voice in your head, absence of any other evidence out in the real world. Rather, God speaks through his word, through the Holy Spirit in your heart, and through the circumstances in your life. In other words, God will answer your question about marriage through a process which usually includes dating. God tells us to be wise. It's not wise to make a big decision without many forms of confirmation. So when you know you should not marry this person, you should not date that person. If you really know God says you should marry this person, then you should just marry that person. If you're unsure what God is saying, whether not to marry this person or marry that person, that's usually when God is telling you to date that person. Because dating is often used by God as a means to reveal his future will for you both. And number five, God clearly wants you to date this person if you two have maxed out the levels of a healthy friendship, but you also want to keep connecting in a deeper way with each other. I think it's great when Christian single men and women are friends. However, we do need to always recognize that there's going to always be an extra variable, an extra element between men and women compared to just a man being a friend, friends with a man or a woman being friends with a woman. There's always an extra dynamic between the male and the female. Emotional pain occurs when a man and woman's intimacy exceeded their commitment levels. When a Christian single man and woman are becoming very close friends, the only way to protect their hearts is for them to increase their commitment to each other. If you wanna bless me in this ministry, give this video a thumbs up because that helps this content spread to more people who might need to see it. I'm Mark from applygodsword.com and until next time, God bless.